What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. I've been meaning to update the organization of the bag add-on that I use, Arc Inventory, which if you haven't seen it before is a really complex and impressive bag add-on that lets you make custom rule sets and has pre-built-in ones to use as well. So I figured while I was at it, it'd be a good opportunity to make a tutorial for the channel. So if you haven't seen Arc Inventory before, I have a feeling you'll be really impressed with what it's able to do. Thank you so much for joining me today, now let's go organize an inventory. A lot of the popular bag add-ons have ways you can organize and sort your items, but Arc Inventory has probably the most advanced and complex customizable rule sets that you can design yourself. You can, of course, just use the standard grouping options that it has pre-installed, which I'll show you folks how to use as well, but the real focal point of the video will be on custom rule writing. I'll leave a download link for Arc Inventory in a pinned comment below so you can grab it and try it out for yourself. Once you have Arc Inventory installed, you should see a bag interface that looks virtually identical to what you see on screen now, as I decided to just hop on the PTR so I could fiddle with all of this from scratch and show you the basics. Arc Inventory has a lot of features, so this won't be a full deep dive into the entirety of the add-on, just the organization of the bag inventory itself. First, I'll give you some examples of how you can use the pre-made rule sets of Arc to organize your bags with basically no effort or knowledge of the custom rules at all. In the top right corner of the bag UI, you should see a bunch of icons. Most are pretty self-explanatory, like refreshing your UI, the bag changer button which lets you see what actual bag items you have currently equipped so you can change them, and restacking your inventory items. You can also use a search function if you're trying to find a specific item, which lets you use keywords or literal names. So for instance, I can find a specific item like my hearthstone by typing in hearth, or I can visibly see all the legendary items in my bag by typing in legendary. Well, these are awesome and handy features, the two icons we'll be looking at in particular are the rulebook and edit mode. We'll start with edit mode. This brings up the customizable sections of Arc Inventory when you click on it. As you can see, our inventory of items is being put into just bar 1 since we haven't set any rules or assignments yet. Well, that's also a bit clunky to look at, so we're going to separate these things out into all the other bars we have available. For a quick and easy example, let's say I want to separate all of my consumable items, like food items, flasks, potions, etc. We'll click on the number 2 box for bar 2, which will bring up a huge assortment of assignment options. The top section, which includes the name, color, and width, will let us control what this section visually looks like, such as the border and background colors. We also have a sorting method, which lets us change the order the items are going to be displayed in this bar once we assign some parameters. As you can see from the Categories Assigned section, there is literally nothing assigned to this bar yet. The last and largest section of this UI element is devoted to all of the assignments we can apply to the bar. Like I mentioned before, we're going to set this to be our consumables, so we'll just take a peek in the consumable assignment section. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory such as potions and flasks. However, as you can see, there are numerous choices for food, drink, and then food and drink. So you could of course just slap all of these in and avoid any second guesses, but it's important to know how to use the debug menu for Arc Inventory. This is really where you can pull out a lot of the information that's important to understand how this add-on groups things or determines what should go where. While in edit mode, simply right click on an item. Here you can assign items manually to specific rule sets, but really we just want to look at the debug menu. As you can see here, this steak a la mode is of the consumable type, but its subtype is food and drink. Now that we know what type of item the UI actually considers it from its subtype, we can choose food and drink on bar 2's list of categories and it will automatically move all items of the same subtype over. This alone is really effective, but what if for example you wanted to separate out all of your Shadowlands legendaries or gear of a certain item level or something a bit more granular? Well, when you start getting into the specific stuff like that, you'll need to write a custom rule. Click on the little red book icon and you'll have a new menu pop up. This will be your rules section, and yours will be empty since we haven't made any custom rules yet, but I'll show you how simple these are to make. One thing I really, highly, supremely recommend you do though is open up the GitHub page for Arc Inventory. I'll be leaving a link to it in a pinned comment below, but this page will help you learn how to write these custom rules and is a great point of reference, so seriously bookmark it if you plan on using Arc Inventory. So first, let's start with something simple and make a rule that separates out all of our Shadowlands legendaries from the rest of our gear. Click the Add button at the bottom of the screen. For the description, we'll just name it Shadowlands Legendaries. You can really name it whatever you want as long as it helps you remember what this rule does. Basically, these custom rules work like a boolean operator. 
where it has a true and false statement. So you need to write out a statement that evaluates the true so that way it can find the Shadowlands legendaries in our inventory so we can separate them out. There are probably numerous ways you could do this, but if you just break up the sentence into a logical statement, it's a lot easier to do than it sounds. Obviously, we only want it to detect legendary items. Well, each item has a rarity quality in the UI, so to find out what quality the item is, we'll use the debug menu on a legendary. As you can see, legendary items are quality number 5. So for our first part of this rule, we'll type in quality, and then the number 5 in parentheses. Already, this rule will grab any legendaries in our inventory. However, we want this to only grab Shadowlands legendaries, so we need to add an additional statement to this. Adding to a statement is really easy, and all you'll need to do is add the word AND after your first statement and then keep on writing. So once again, we'll take a peek at the debug menu for a Shadowlands legendary item. The Shadowlands expansion is number 8 in the debug menu, so we'll include AND expansion parentheses 8 in the rule. After we've done that, just click accept and the rule will be finalized. We can now assign this rule to any of the bars in our bag UI. Click on the number for whatever bar you want to assign this rule to, and then go down to the Rule tab. You should see Shadowlands Legendary, or whatever you named it, but its text will be red. You'll first need to enable the rule, and then you can either click on the name or on the Assign option to set the rule to whatever bar you're editing. You should see all of the items that apply to this rule shift immediately in your bags, now separated by their legendary quality and being from the Shadowlands expansion. For rule operators, you have AND, OR, and NOT though you'll often find the AND operator to be the most commonly used, just keep those other ones in mind. Also, they must be kept in lowercase, otherwise it will throw an error at you in your chat window. You'll also notice there is an order number for each rule. These are very important to pay attention to, because you may come to a point where technically some of your items might meet the criteria for multiple rules that you're using at the same time. To make sure a certain rule has priority over others, it must have a lower order number. So, for instance, a rule with order number 100 will be followed before a rule with order number 101. If you do need to edit the order number or just edit a rule in general, simply open up the rulebook again and click on Edit after selecting which rule you want to edit, and then there you go. You can change whatever you want to and make sure you click Accept at the bottom and it's all set. This is just barely scratching the surface of what Arc Inventory is capable of, so I really strongly recommend you check out that GitHub page so that way you can see all of the options that are available to you for modifying your own bag inventory sorting and the format that you need to do it in. Using the wrong format or the wrong keywords will result in errors and it just not working at all. And the built-in debugger it has is about as useful as the one that comes with Visual Studio if you've done any level of programming before. Which is not very useful, it just tells you that it doesn't want to work and that it expects something, and that's it. Anyways, I hope you folks enjoyed this little overview of the basics of Arc Inventory between its predetermined assignments, as well as the basics to custom rules. If this video helped you, then please consider leaving a like or checking out the rest of the channel if you're new to my little corner of the YouTube universe. I cover a lot of WoW-related things, and if you end up liking that, then maybe consider subscribing. It's all really appreciated and helps a lot with the channel's growth. And as always, my gratitude to you, my viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Shiba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.